Okay, we are live. And so for those that are here, please type in the comment section when you are able to hear our voice. We know that the voice has been acting up. And so please let us know when you can hear us. Actually, let me do this. Because all that I gotta do is go here. <laughs> we already gone live, so hold on a second. So once you join us, please let us know if you can hear us. If you can hear us, please type in the comment section that you can hear us. Please let us know in the comment section if you can hear us. Yes. So this is love for sale so okay. okay everybody thank you for joining us today for this for we need to talk yes so we are gonna go live on on facebook as well so we are going live on facebook as well and so whenever you join us today, please remember uh, the title. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Love for sale. So whenever you join us, please remember to type your name in the comment section so we know you are here. As you all know, this is the month of February, Black History Month, and this is Valentine's Day weekend. So we are doing giveaways this whole month. So please remember, please remember to share, please remember to share the link and add people to join as well. Please remember to share the link and also share the okay okay so happy valentine's day to each and everyone that is joining us today today is a special episode today is a special day because this is valentine's day weekend and we are live and before i even let my guests talk i would like to tell you guys our name our Sorry, our YouTube name has changed. So now it is no longer UTV. It is it is no longer UTV. It is Ousua TV. Again, it's Ousua TV. And Ousua is spelled O W U S U A. Again, it's O W U S U A. So please remember to subscribe and share the link as well okay okay we are gonna get there we are gonna get there yeah we have some viewers okay so if you're joining us on facebook if you're joining us on youtube please remember to type your name in the comment section Hi, Mr. Raphael. Thank you for joining us today. Please remember to type your name in the comment section. And also, please remember to subscribe to the YouTube channel as well. So we are live today. And our topic for today is love for sale. Remember to like, remember to subscribe, and remember to comment for a chance to get a gift from we need to talk thank you all so much i hope everybody is doing well i hope everybody is having a wonderful weekend so far i hope our time with you is going to be worth your while today and i hope you enjoy please remember you can type in any questions any comments anything that you have to express to us in the comment section on facebook and on youtube remember to type in your name so you can also be entered into the drawing today so thank you each and everyone my name is abna Nyanta. i am the host for we need to talk and today i have my very own special special guest with me today i couldn't have found anybody that was so right for the topic for today 
Her name, her name is Monica. So I'm going to give her the chance to introduce herself to us and then we're going to get started. So Monica, go ahead. Tell All us right. about you. All right. Hi, everyone. Um, welcome on the show. My name is Monica Fiat Dancor. Um, I'm currently in Dallas, Texas. I was born in Ghana and moved to the United States when I was six years old, and I've been living here since. Um, I'm really excited to be here on this show today. It's been long overdue. Um, it's Love Month. Happy Valentine's Day in advance to everyone. And I'm really excited to start on this topic. So I hope you guys are all excited um, just as we are. So welcome, everyone. Okay. Thank you so much, everyone that is joining us today. Please remember to type your name in the comment section so that you'll be entered into the drawing. And like Monica said, she is from Ghana, and we're going to talk today. But before we get started on our conversation, I just want to ask a few questions, because as you know, this year, we need to talk has changed up a little bit. We want to educate, educate, educate about Africa. And so we're going to ask a few questions. Um, if you're watching us today, you can also type your, your answers in the comments section as well. So Monica, Yes, ma'am. My first question, mm -hmm. what are the colors of the Ghana flag? All right. So the colors of the Ghana flags are um, red, yellow, and green. And we can't forget the little star in the middle because that's what makes us unique and that's what makes us who we are. So it's red, yellow, and green with the black star. Thank you so much. And our next question is, who was the first president of Ghana? All right, so the first president of Ghana, um, may he still rest in peace, was President Kwame Nkrumah. Um, yes. Thank you. So exactly where in Ghana are you from? So I am from um, Kumase. I was born in Kumase and actually was raised um, in Kumasi before I moved to the United States. So yeah, I'm a Kumasi girl. You are a Kumarakan girl. Yes, okay. very proud of <laughs> girl. Very proud. So shout out to all the <laughs> Americans out there watching us today. Happy Valentine's Day. We are just spreading the love to everybody yeah. all over Kumarika and everybody all over Ghana, all over Africa and all over the world. Everybody mm -hmm. in the US too, we are not forgetting you guys because we cannot forget where we are right now. So happy Valentine's Day in advance to everybody or should I say happy love day to everybody yeah. for those that don't believe in that word Valentine I understand but love is something that we all need that that is something that we all have to give as well happy black history month also we cannot forget that in the month of February because this month is all about acknowledging and celebrating the Black history and the Black culture. So if you are a Black person anywhere watching us, happy Black History Month to you. Okay, so love for sale. Mm -hmm. I got a lot of comments and I got a lot of messages today about the topic. And I know that a lot of people are just wondering, um, love for sale, love for sale, what is that all about? Trust me, you are going to know by the end of our conversation today. So let me start off by asking you, Monica, to you, what is love? Okay, so um, to me, hmm, uh, love is a feeling, really. Um, okay. And I believe, uh, well, the first thing I think about when I think about love is God. Um, okay. You know, no one has ever met him. We don't know you know, who God is physically, but um, spiritually, we experience who he is. And I think that's what love is all about. It's really a feeling how someone makes you feel um, without even really knowing them, you know, physically or even speaking to them. Um, it's, it's really a feeling that you get, you know, within you. So okay it's an essential feeling hmm. well, like you heard her say, love to her is a feeling and her very core meaning for it is something that is expressed to us from God. So 
we are going to be discussing love today. There is no better day to talk about love than today because this is Valentine's Day weekend and it's also Black History Month and the Black race is all about love. I know I'm all about love and mm -hmm. I know Monica here is all about love. Mm -hmm. And so we are going to dig in, we're going to talk in depth about love. But then before we get all that going, we're just gonna be discussing briefly about like, the challenges of finding love in where we are. And when I say where we are, not just geographically, mm -hmm. but where we are as a person, as an individual in our life. So Monica, how easy or how hard is it for you to find love in where you are? Okay. Um, well, for me personally, I I really don't think that it's, it's not hard, but it's not easy to find love for me. Okay. Um, and I'll explain, you know, both perspectives. So, yeah. So on the easy perspective, um, I say it's not easy to find love because you yourself, you know what you want and, um, you know, you know what you can bring to the table. You know what it is that you don't want as well. So it's important to know what you want and it's important to know what you don't want. Um, so I say it's not easy because, you know, sometimes people come around and they come around for the wrong reasons. And if you don't know what you want, then you will always be in tune to give them what, you know, they're coming for. But if you understand who you are and if you understand, you know, your standards and your morals, then you won't be so quick to jump. give. Yes. Yeah, so quick to jump and so quick to give, um, you know people, whatever it is that they come for. So yeah. it's not really easy on that aspect. And when I say um, it's it's not hard, it's not hard because I know love is out there. And I really know that, you know, when God created us all, he created somebody special for you. You know, as human beings, we're just so impatient sometimes. And we always say, oh, love is not there. You know, there's no one loves me, no one this, this, that. You, it, It's it's understandable to think that way as human beings, but um, I know that it's not hard because there's love out there for everybody. You know, God did not just make us to be alone. You okay. know, Adam was not alone. Adam had his Eve. Okay. So how much more us that God really, you know, loves and created. So um, when I say it's not easy, that's my explanation okay. and also it not being hard. Okay. Thank you for everybody that is joining us today. Our topic today is love for sale. And that phrase alone is... I say is crucial, but then it's also very in-depth and we are going to talk in depth so everybody can get an understanding of what I meant when I titled today's topic, Love for Sale. So my guest here with me today is my own very beautiful Monica and we are talking about love for sale. So Monica says she's from Ghana, she's a American and she's been in the US for some time, but she is still representing us a Ghanaian. And um, she was telling us what love meant to her. And I just asked her, is it easy for her to find love in where she is? So when I said where she is, I was not just meaning geographical location, but where she is as a person. She answered and told us that so it's easy and it's also not easy. It's easy in the sense that there is love that is made out there for everybody, but it's also not easy because you as an individual know what you're capable of, you know your qualities, you know what you're looking for. But then when it comes to love, you are going out there giving yourself and also trying to find somebody that is going to give themselves. And if you don't know what you want, Unfortunately, people will take you for a ride mm -hmm. and it's just not a very pleasant experience for anybody. So you said that it's, it's easy and it's not easy. So do you lean towards the easy part more or do you lean towards the hard part the most? Um, well, for me, I'll probably lean towards the easy part the most. And I think that's just the faith that I have that it's out there. Okay. But I know it's not probably, it's probably not like that for everybody. Okay. People probably find okay. it harder. So, but, yeah. so basically what you're saying is that you do believe that there is somebody out there mm -hmm. for you to find. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the challenges in trying to find that somebody out there? Because uh, I, I guess mm -hmm. it's unfortunate 
that we just don't get to stay at our homes and then love just doesn't get delivered at our door. I guess in some people's case, you hear them say, oh, I ordered something. And the delivery driver came and oh, and we go. There it was. I found my love and we lived happily till today. But then it's not always the case for everybody. So what are some of the challenges in trying to find that, that person, trying to find that love out there? Okay. Um, a few challenges, I would say the first is um, just not just not someone coming into your life to waste. It, okay. You know, um, time is very precious to me and as I'm sure it is to everybody, you know. So one of my main things is, you know, if you're trying to get to know me, what are your intentions? Okay. What is it that you're here for? You know, we have to be really open into speaking our minds and really talking to people and asking them, why, why do you want to get to know me? Why do you feel like I may be the one? You know, so I, I feel like a couple of challenges is just really not knowing who they are, okay. not knowing their intentions. Okay. But then the beautiful part of it is the getting to know aspect. That's when, you know, you get to know each other and um, hopefully you you, you know, like come it. to realize what their intentions are in the okay. end. But I would say that's a few challenges. Okay. Though. Um, in in trying to get to know somebody, as you mentioned, you know, sometimes you you meet people and they tell you they tell you one thing, mm -hmm. but then their actions are otherwise. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes mm -hmm. you also meet people and they don't tell you something, <laughs> but then their intentions seem like something else too. So in in trying to pursue love or mm -hmm. in trying to find love. Where should the main focus be? In, um, should it be on what the person is telling you verbally mm -hmm. about themselves or should the concentration be on what the person is showing you with their actions? Action speaks louder than words. You believe so? Absolutely. Okay. Um, okay. And yeah. why do you say that? Um, I say that because, I mean, I for me personally, I don't want you to tell me what I want to hear. You know, I'd rather, I like the tough love. Let me know what it is. The truth. Yes. Let me know the truth. I know sometimes it hurts, but I'd rather go through the pain now than to waste my time and go through the pain five, ten years from now. Okay. Um, so just let me know what it is. Um, show me. Let me. Show yes. Let me see it versus just telling me what you think I want to hear. Okay. So, yeah. So you prefer you prefer a doer versus a talker. Absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what about in situations where, you know, when somebody doesn't really tell you something mm -hmm. and they act on it, we as human beings tend to form our own understanding or our own perception from like the actions that they brought they bring forward mm -hmm. and sometimes we can misinterpret right. what people mean right. because genuinely somebody might meet you they might be nice to you they might be talking with you mm -hmm. and 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 giving you so much attention and so much of their time mm -hmm. and as a woman you might interpret that as oh this person probably likes me mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. they want to pursue me but then you go to find out months down the line that this person has somebody mm -hmm. or this person is not interested in you in that mm -hmm. manner. Right. So, like, what do you say about that? Right. So, um, just as much as I want you to show me, I mean, communication is also very important. Okay. So, you know, you have to talk. It is. You know, you have to talk. Um, so, in the beginning, I know sometimes if somebody is in your life for the wrong reasons, a lot of the times they may lie to you. Okay. Um, even if they have somebody, they may not necessarily be honest with you. Yeah. And in that sense, it's really hard for them to show because all they're thinking about is, let me try to hide this person from, from you because I don't want you to find out that I'm dating somebody else. Okay. Um, but I think that's when you have to just do your homework and don't rush. You know, that's, that's another topic on its own yes, and not yes. rushing, yes. you know, take your time, really try to get to know whoever it is that you want the to be with. Is. You'll not know somebody a hundred percent. I know that. You that's, can never do you that. You can never do <laughs> yeah. that. You yourself, I don't even think you, you know yourself a hundred percent. That's true. So, you know, don't go into the relationship thinking I'm about to figure A through Z out before we get married. You know, it's, it doesn't work that way. But, um, 
you know, give yourself time and pray about it. What's what's the rush for? What, right. what is there to rush well, about, you know? Well, um, she just hit something. <laughs> she just hit something. She just hit and one of the nails. And this is a topic that we are going to really dissect today. What is the rush for? Mm-hmm. Is there a rush? So Monica, tell me, you are Ghanaian just mm-hmm. as myself. Mm-hmm. Regardless of where we ever find ourselves in this world, that fact is never going to change. Right. And because we love our culture and where we are from so much, we tend to associate with our uh, our fellow Ghanaians. Mm-hmm. You know, what are some of the things that you get to hear whenever uh, you are talking to? Whenever you go out in the community, what what are some of the things that you get to hear as a single woman? Um, okay, like from other people. From other women. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, a lot actually, okay. <laughs> but I'll name a few. So, um, a few questions that I probably hear from other people is, "Oh, when when are you getting married?" Right. That's number one. Okay. Um, number two is, "Do you want to get married?" Right. And then number three is what are you waiting for? Right. So okay. those are all three things okay. that I think we can dissect. OK. <laughs> OK. Um, I'm going to I'm going to start from uh, I what, what was the first one? Why are you married? Um, why are you not married? Like, why are when do you, you when not, are you going to get married? Why are you not married? <laughs> Like our work? audiences that, that are watching us today, I want you to type in some of the questions or some of the comments that you hear mm-hmm. or you know, or you yourself has, has even gone ahead to tell somebody that is single, like a single young girl. When people say, why are you not married? What does that really mean? Like, l- l- let me let me say it again. Let me talk. Let me <laughs> say that question again. <laughs> Why are you not married? Why are you not married? You know when somebody say why, it means that you should have, but you chose not to. And so when people say why are you not married, what what does that mean to you when you hear that question? Um. Well, when I hear someone asking me why am I not married, the first thing that comes to mind is how do you know that I don't want to be married? You know, have you asked me if I want to get married? And also, is there a time frame that I'm supposed to be married in? And you don't even know my age. So it's for you, you've probably formed an idea of when you think I should be married, right? Mm -hmm. But how do you know that that's my time? And how do you know that that's the plan that God has for me? You know, but we're so quick to jump. We're so quick to ask, oh, why are you not married? When are you going to get married? But really, you don't take the step. You don't take a step back to think about, you know, <laughs> what, did what, it take? Yes, what it takes. And the same person that's going to ask you, why are you not married? Is the same person five years from now when things are not going well is why did you get into that marriage? You know, there, there there's just so many aspects that comes with this kind of topic. Okay. So, I just hope we can touch up on everything. We but. we we are gonna do our best in yeah. like discussing all the things that are associated with this conversation. So before we move on, um, I'm just going to say hello to everybody that is on with us live today on YouTube or on Facebook. So Mr. Raphael, hello, thank you for joining us, young friends. Andreas, I hope you're doing good. Mr. SKT, you said the channel name. The channel name change was very necessary. Thank you. Yes, I realized that. So a lot of people were complaining that when they typed UTV, there were so many things that were coming up. But now our name has changed from UTV to Osua TV. So when you type that, that is the first channel that pop up. Please remember to subscribe. If you already subscribed, I beg you, don't go and unsubscribe yourself. (laughs) When you go to the channel and there is a D at the end of the subscribe, that means that's an action you're for already taking so please don't click on it again because if you do it's going to unsubscribe you but if you're yet to subscribe please make sure you do so so you add that t to the subscription okay and mr skt you said the audio quality improved well thank you i have been playing around with youtube and i think i'm getting a hold of this thing now so thank you mr joe said that people may ask because they may know someone they could match you that's what he said. And Mr. Raphael said, I think 
the question is a cultural thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when I when I was sitting down thinking about today's topic, love for sale, this is exactly where it ties in, like at this point of the conversation. You know, love is not something that you can order from Amazon. It's not something that is available at Walmart. You cannot go to Malcolm in Ghana, Nigeria, Cote d'Ivoire, or anywhere in the world and buy yourself a piece of love. You cannot buy a box of love, rosy, uh, a dozen of love, or any form of love. And so love is not for sale. When people approach young women, especially in our culture, in, in our African setting, and they ask them that question, it throws on so much pressure. It throws on so much discouragement. It breaks down the esteem of young women because it's as if it's something that is available out there that you are capable of going to purchase, but yet you have consciously make, made that choice that you refuse to go purchase it. And I know that sometimes some things seem like they seem easy for us to say mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. we, we speak it without even thinking about it. But you always have to remember that the one on the receiving end, what that thing is going to do to that person, whatever you are saying or whenever you're using words, you have to think, is this going to edify the person? Is this going to strengthen the person? Is this going to encourage the person or is my what are my words going to break this person down? So when you ask somebody, where, why are you not married? And you know, like it has gone to a point, I know some, excuse me to say, some yeah. rude young girls out there will say that, did you give me somebody and I refuse to marry them? <laughs> and just like Monica is saying, like we don't even take the time to ask to find out if this person, first off, how old they are, second of if they are interested in getting married, because even Paul said that it's not everybody that would marry. The Bible says it. And just because somebody is not married does not make them less of a person. None of us knows the, the full purpose of God for our life. And we all aspire to, to want the good things of life. But before we get to that point, we as a society, we as a community, we as family, we as members of the same group, we that are around, we have to be conscious of things. Because just like Monica is saying, you ask somebody, why are you not married? Okay, they meet the next guy on the street or they meet the next guy and they get married too. Now you hear that the marriage is crumbling and that same person is going to say, why did you get married to that person? Why didn't you take your time? It, <laughs> mm -hmm. Some people will get married and right after you also hear, so when are you having children? It's another thing. Like we we choose to talk as if we, we are God. Mm -hmm. Like we choose to talk as if we have the power to do whatever, whenever. But it's not like that though. There are certain things in life that like food is something that we have access to. Now, if there is food in my house and I'm not eating it, that is something that is a neglect on my end. But just because there are, there are men out there that maybe men that I've met or men that you think you see me around and I'm not married, doesn't mean that I am not doing something right or doesn't mean that I consciously chose to. What if the, the will for their life and mine are not the same? What if they are not God's plan for me? Have you thought about it that way? So today we are going to talk, and trust me, this conversation has nothing to do with us being against marriage because mm -hmm. marriage is a blessing. You know, we, are, we, are, we were made out of love. And so internally, everything about us, it's about love. Yeah. We we flourish. We function well when we we love and when we are loved. So we all we all wish. I know. Uh, I want to be married. Oh, I'm gonna. No, I'm not saying I want to be married. I'm gonna <laughs> get married for sure. Of Monica, you are absolutely. Right. I'll get so married for sure. We are not here no talking about. about that. Yes, oh, yeah. no. we are not here talking about like or going against marriage. Yeah. We're for love. We, okay, that, we love love. Yes, so let's just but, but what there. we are trying to get out there, the concept we're trying to put out there is that love yeah. is not for sale. Yeah. Unfortunately, I cannot order love mm -hmm. from Amazon. 
trust me, if we could, some of us would have ordered on <laughs> same day delivery already. <laughs> but it's not like that. Right. Okay, Monica, so we're moving on. Now let's go to the part when they ask you, so when are you getting married? Okay. What, what, <laughs> what, what is that? When somebody <laughs> says, when are you getting married? Okay. What, what's the answer that you give them? Okay, so it's funny. Um, I want to take it back to a comment that I read off of social media. I think it's been a while. Um, somebody actually posted something about that, okay. that they were, a lot of people would ask them, when are you getting married? When are you getting married? And I think it was just a comment that the person made because they have been so fed up with people asking them the same question that, you know, she pretty much replied to them and said, when are you going to die? Do you know when you're going to die? <laughs> You know, it's, well. it's just one of those things where yeah. it's like if you're asking somebody this, you don't know, you don't know the outcome. You don't know the future. So like you said, we really need to be mindful of that. But um, going back to my opinion. So whenever somebody asks me that, usually I tell them um, in God's time. And that's really sincerely within me. I don't work on my time. I know there are people out there that rush through their life and make decisions without concerning God's you know, approval. That's not who I am. You know, the way I choose to move, I choose to move on God's, you know, on, on God's rounds. Yeah. And on, and on God's time. So usually when you say that, people are like, well, yeah, I know it's God's time. It's God's time. But you also have to do this and you also have to do that. And I say, OK, what if I do all that and it's still not his time? Then what? Then I'm going to not according to his will. Right. So really, I just tell them in God's time and the, the God that I serve, like I said earlier, maybe it's the crazy faith in me, but I know it will happen. It's just a matter of when it will, right? And it's a matter of the things that I want to accomplish myself first, okay. you know? So I think maybe instead of asking questions like that in the future, maybe ask them, what is it that you want to do? What's your, what, what's your purpose in life? You know, ask, ask that. Right. What what do you want to do in life first? Because people make it seem like life is all about just being married and being a wife, especially in the African culture. It's like if you're married, that's it. That's it. You've accomplished everything you need to. And oh, my goodness. Wait till you have one, two or three children. Oh, that's it. This person's life is <laughs> yeah, life comes to an end. It, that's it. It's perfect. It's perfect. Oh, it's okay. perfect. OK. Uh, uh, um. This conversation is like going deeper and the speed is almost like faster than I can I, I can even hold on to. But I want to kind of piggyback on what you were saying about when people say, when are you like, when are you getting married? Mm -hmm. And versus like the person asking, oh, when are you dying? Mm -hmm. Like these are things that we literally don't have control of. Now people can do it anyhow. Like when it comes to marriage, some people can get married to like just anybody. And then the marriage can break mm -hmm. or they might be in that marriage and suffer till they die. And then with that, some people's time, if it's not your time, I mean, besides those that commit suicide, like, yeah. how are you going to do it? Are you just going to sit in your room and just call to yourself, dead, come to me, dead, come to me? Or is a single person supposed to be in their room saying, marriage, come to me, marriage, come to me? You don't know what the person is doing behind closed doors. Mm -hmm. You don't know the steps that the person is taking towards mm -hmm. these things. Mm -hmm. And I know that some, some people meet you and they have sincere and genuine intentions when they ask these questions. Mm -hmm. But yeah. there are certain ways that they ask the question. Mm -hmm. I have had somebody tell me personally, looked at me in the face and said, no matter how far you go in life as a woman, no matter how much education you get, no matter what kind of business and money that you get, if you're not married, you are like a penny. You're worthless. And for my audience that are not in America, a penny is like the least like of all the money, the US money, the least of them is one penny. Like you can't do anything with a penny. They toss it out like nothing. When somebody approaches you as a young woman and, and makes such comments to you, 
it does so much to you, not physically, but mentally, psychologically, mm -hmm. spiritually, and everything. It's like the person is giving you reasons to be ungrateful to God. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when that person said that, I, I stood for some time and I was like, wait, did I really just hear that? Mm -hmm. Or was I just imagining it? Then I went, I sat in my car and my whole drive home, I was just looking at my life like, oh my God. Like, am I so worthless? Like, am yeah. I yeah. Mm -hmm. But what if I got married and ended up in an abusive marriage mm -hmm. and I got killed? Mm -hmm. What if I got married mm -hmm. and I had children and my husband was irresponsible? Mm -hmm. What if I got married and I was living an adulterous life? What if I got married and something bad happened? And I'm not saying that if I got married, all these bad things will happen. But one should not make mm -hmm. a young woman feel or think that just because they have not reached that place in life, mm -hmm they are useless or they are worthless. Now, you know, when, when you ask a woman, especially in our culture, when you get married, that is just, I don't know. I, I don't, I, I, I don't have like <laughs> nice and better ways. I know. Trust me, I am, I, I am very passionate about this topic, yes. not just for myself, yes. because I, 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 I have, come to understand so much mm -hmm. and so I am not even too worried about myself but yeah. when I sit and I reflect I think about like the younger the girls young people are not as strong yes that have stuff, not like, that don't have a thick yeah. skin like mm -hmm. what what do they feel mm -hmm. like how do they handle these comments how do they feel when I, and you know sometimes parents say oh when I want to take my child out they say they don't want to go Sometimes it's because of all these kind of things that they get to hear when they go outside. Because if I'm in the comfort of my home, nobody is going to approach me and ask me such questions or nobody is going to approach me and give me these type of comments. But here I am. If I am coming out to a funeral, auntie, when you meet me, ask me how are you doing? How is life going? How is your work? How are your siblings? Talk about those things that are already in my life and their current status. But don't don't try to like look down upon me because of what you feel or what you believe I should have, but yet I don't have. And this caused so many issues. I know I have I have spoken with like grown married men, I have spoken with grown married women that some like are able to tell me, you know, when I was got, when I was getting married, I wasn't ready, but there was pressure and somebody was mm -hmm. saying this and somebody was saying that. And to what Monica said, you know, in our African society for a woman, it's like your only purpose in life is you get born, you learn how to cook and clean, you get married you and kids. you have children you and have your sex. life has ended. That's it. Do you honestly think that God sat down <laughs> and said in his image, all we had to do was come and do all these things and that? So so if that, that is the ultimate goal in life. So after these women have children, what are they supposed to do? Go kill themselves? No. Go ahead. Yeah. I'm I'm so sorry. Yeah, no, 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 I'm, no, no, I'm, no. I'm just like no. leaving myself into this conversation. No, it's oh my God. God. no, 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 no. It's it's good point. Um, so I just something just came in mind right now. So um I'm just going to speak from the African culture background because that's that's who I am. So um I think we've had a conversation about something like that before where um, I was saying, so usually if you're, you know, if you're raising children in an African household, everybody is different. This is not for every household that's, you know, from an African background, but um, we need to really think about how we want to raise our children. You know, what, what is the most important thing in life? What are we trying to accomplish? You know, you give birth, you have this baby, you raise them, they grow up. And what is it that you're instilling in them? To me, you know, I'm not a mother yet, but, you know, by the grace of God, when I do become a mother, what ha the way I want to raise my child is, number one, you know, through God. And 
our main destination is where to, to for all of us to make it to heaven, right? Yes. So, you know, <laughs> yes. so and what are the steps that you're going to take to make it to heaven? Um, the, the Bible that I read, it's not giving me a checklist of, I mean, it does give you a checklist of what you need to do mm-hmm. to get close to God, but you know, nowhere in there does it say if you get married, if you have children, if this, that, that, that's when you're it's making not it part to of the heaven. It's really heaven. not, you know. So what what is more important is to me, what is more important is the way you raise your children in in Christ, right? You need to make sure that they have a good heart, the way they treat others, you know, the purpose in life. Because one day when God comes and call you, they're not going to say, hey, God is not going to look at me and say, Monica, you gave birth and you, you know, you were married. So here you, you go to heaven. There. That's your pastor. You know, he's going to ask you, what did you do? How many lives did you impact? Exactly. What was your purpose in life? What did you do within that time frame that I gave you? What were you able to accomplish? And what, you know, yeah. what would you say? I'm sorry to cut you off, but yeah. in, in just what you're saying, do you think in in our community or in our in our African society, is there a purpose for marriage? Like in the home, are we trained to know the purpose for marriage besides or when you grow up, somebody's supposed to get married? No. I don't think so. And uh, for those that are watching us, I'm sorry. <laughs> Please type in the comment box if you know what if there is a purpose for marriage in our African society or in our African community and essentially in our African homes? Do we even teach that? Do we educate? Do we train people to know what marriage is or the purpose for getting married? Because as we know, when you're doing anything without purpose, you do not, like you just do it just anyhow. And those things end up not like being effective mm-hmm. or there is no end results, no good end results at that. And so is there a purpose in marriage? And if there is a purpose in marriage, is that taught in our African homes? Mm-hmm. Is that taught in our African society? Is that taught in our African community? Because growing up, all that I got to pick from our society was that when a woman gets to their 20s, mm-hmm. they're supposed to get married. When a man starts making money enough to take care of a woman, they're supposed to get married. Mm -hmm. But I don't remember ever like learning from the principle. What you're supposed to do? Why are you? Yeah. Why do you get married? Mm -hmm. What are some of the preparations that they Mm -hmm. they train people on getting married? Mm -hmm. Some, you know, (laughs) this baffles me when I hear like um, all these uh, all these young guys saying, "Oh, me." When I'm getting married, I want a woman that can cook, that can clean, that can do this and this and this and all that. Mm-hmm. And you, when you get married, what are you? What are you bringing to that table yeah. besides the fact that you can work and mm-hmm. make money? Because right. essentially, marriage is not just about money. Mm-hmm. What are some of the qualities? What are the things that parents are taking their time, especially with the guys? Mm-hmm. Because with the girls, we know that. We can cook, we can clean. Mm-hmm. We, we <laughs> you learn submission. And submission is something I want to bring an adult to come sit here and talk to us about because they give us that understanding that submission is supposed to be when you lay your face on the floor. You know? And so what exactly is like what what is it that we are looking for? What are, what is it that we are training people to look for when they get into that? that bracket or that age gap, mm-hmm. that age group that should be getting married. Because as we are stated here now, like we both want to get married, right? Mm-hmm. But I don't think anybody in the community has ever like called you out and said, oh Monica, you know, now that you are of age to get married, you need to make sure that you put this in place. Mm-hmm. You need to make sure you do this in place and all that. And I think some churches, like when you're about to, like when you're doing the premarital counseling Mm -hmm. they do that but that's a short call Mm -hmm. for something that we are going to be using for the rest of our life Mm -hmm. we are spending three months six months at that time of preparing for marriage too you're thinking about the venue my dress Mm -hmm. my Mm -hmm. bridesmaid the food and all that so everything is just it's going it's coming it's going it's coming you get to that marriage and it's like that's why i mean intrigue they say our real client hey then yeah yeah but yeah my yeah Mm-hmm. 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 
I'm, uh, we are sorry, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, we are speaking to your people. We, we are on a tree show, but the, all that she was saying is that in our language, we say that the road to marriage is a long road. And if we don't have the resources and, and we don't get people to advise and give us like the things that we will need on the way, we might not make it. But you were, you were wanting to say something. Yeah. So when you were speaking about um, just not being able to learn about the principles and the different things that you need, you know, to succeed in marriage, um, it just made me think about how much it's it's almost like in the African culture, we, we, we that's what we worship. We worship the marriage. We worship you know, as a lady being married, but we don't think about, and not, not saying everybody, but, you know, sometimes mm -hmm. maybe, yeah, mostly it's like, you don't think about what that comes with because you as a young female and as a young man, you get married and you go into your home with your spouse, right? Mm -hmm. You're not going in there with your parents or your family. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty much like both of you, it's, it's up to both of you to make this thing work, mm -hmm. you know? Of course, if you put God in the center of it, if God was in it from the beginning, mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure it would work. And that goes into the whole patience and taking your time thing. But, um, you know, you see a lot of women that are in an abusive marriage. And even when they tell their parents, they're like, well, it's going to be fine and stick around and just pull through. It's going to be OK. And I think that goes back into the love title. Do you you ask you have to ask yourself, do you love yourself enough? Or, or do you love that person more, you know, to, to go into that relationship or that marriage and have them torture your life, have them, you know, abuse you and still feel like it's going to be okay. okay. Why do we put ourselves through that? Why do we put ourselves? Well, for our audience, you heard her question. Why do we put ourselves through that? Sometimes you, you hear of all these abuse in marriage and people are sticking to it, not even for the right reason. And you know something? I, I'm going to go back to the Bible. When Jesus Christ was, was with the disciples and they were having dinner and uh, the prostitute came mm -hmm. and she was pouring that expensive perfume on Jesus' feet and Judas was like, Oh my goodness, mm -hmm. why are you doing this? We can use that money and we can uh, go feed the hungry yeah. and take care of the needy and all that. One thing Jesus Christ said, he said that you can do all that when I'm gone. Yeah. But the part that really gets me was the Bible said specifically that Jesus Christ knew what was in Judas's heart. Mm -hmm. He said what sounded right to the, to the ear, mm -hmm. but the intentions behind it was, was wrong. wrong. Mm -hmm. So when this comes back down to the marriages that we are talking about, if I go get married because I think I am about to, like my eggs are drying up, if I go get <laughs> married because I can't take the pressures of everybody asking, me anymore if I go get married for the wrong reasons mm -hmm. there is absolutely no point there is no point in that and no one knows the sorry and, and no one knows the time frame either so you know when people I think it's funny when people say oh by the time I'm 25 I want to be married and then by 27 I want to have my first child by 33 I want to be done having kids how do you know that that's what God has for you? You may be 25 and get married. That's great. That's beautiful. That's everybody's time and right. when we come to God. Like, exactly. But it's, it's not but, a, a one one size fit all. Right. So somebody so, will get married at 20. Somebody will get married at 24. Mm -hmm. Somebody will get married at 30. Mm -hmm. But that is God's timing for each and every one. And even if you get married at 25, mm -hmm. who's to tell that 27 you're going to have kids? But somebody may be 30 and 32 and get married at 32 and end up having triplets. Yeah. So now that you're 25, you've been waiting all these years to get a baby or to have kids. But somebody that waited a couple years to get married now has twins or has tri triplets. So you go back and you think, wow, is that when you're really going to sit and reflect on the time and really know that this this whole thing, it's not on my time, but it's on God's. So this whole this whole topic you know? come down to Timing is different for everybody. Mm -hmm. And I believe that in our African society, we are not very conscious of that concept. And we tend to have a mindset for, like, we, we tend to have one size to put everybody in. Or we have one box that we place and measure everybody by. 
but that is not how God works. That mm -hmm. is not how life is. Your experiences might be different than my experiences. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make your life less valuable mm -hmm. or more valuable than mine, mm -hmm. but we appreciate each other. We mm -hmm. celebrate each other in the stages that we reach, but we don't sit there and condemn others mm -hmm. just because they have not gotten to that part. Peter did his own ministry. God used him immensely. Paul came at a later time. He also did his own, mm -hmm. and he was used immensely by God too. Mm -hmm. But you cannot condemn Paul or condemn Peter because they are not on the same level. Mm -hmm. So what we are talking about today, this has been a very emotional conversation because we, we both, I just have had those experiences where people approach us and ask these questions. And our, our conversation today was not just for us, but it was for everybody else, every young woman out there who is struggling, who is like in their rooms crying, who are confused, who knows that they are in a wrong relationship, but they are mm -hmm. trying so hard, holding on to that, to just because they want to please the community or the society when they know it's not right, all because of these pressures that people bring on. Love is not for sale. Love is not for sale. If it was for sale, we trust me, like I said earlier, some of us would have done same day delivery on Amazon Prime, but it is not for sale. And and if you're real, if you're watching us and you're a young man or a young female, um, I really hope that this inspires you. If you're single, if you don't have anyone in your life, and if you feel like this, I'm at the age where I need to be, I need to be married, I need to have a loved one, or I need to be loved, or you know, I want to be married, and all those questions that come in your head, honey, take your time, relax, breathe. It's going to be okay. You know, nobody even knows what tomorrow is going to entail. Even people that are married that are living their lives, we don't even know if tomorrow will be here. It's okay, you know, just ask yourself this question. What's my purpose in life? What do I want to accomplish? One day when God calls me, what am I going to stand in front of him and tell him? You need to have, you know, something, you, you need to have something on there that is going to be pleasing to God. You know, work on that. That's what you need to find out. Find your purpose and work towards it. You know, be kind to one another. Um, you know, just let, let communicate with God. Let God know what it is that you want to do. And he already knows your heart. He knows the kind of person that you are. And just as much as you desire marriage, he desires marriage for you. It's just he loves you so much that he wants you to take your time. He wants you. He wants to prepare you for that. So please, if you're beating yourself up about it, it's okay. It's going to be fine. Just find your purpose in life. Do what it is that you need to do. Do what God has called you to do. For the meantime, find what you love and do it. You know, if that's going to school and getting your degrees, do that. If that's opening up a business and supporting people, do that. Whatever it is that is on your heart, do it. You know, because when the time comes and you're married, you're going to look back and say, oh, my goodness. Now my whole time is for this man and these children. What do I love? What about me? What have I even done? You know, you want to be able to you have your whole life ahead of you. So right now, just take your time, invest in what you love. And I'm telling you, it will all come together. OK, so just <laughs> that's a little advice for me. It's going to be OK. Just breathe. It is going to be okay. And just like Monica just said, there is purpose in life mm -hmm. in all that we do. Just don't concentrate on the purpose that is yet to manifest. Don't belittle yourself or don't look back. Don't look down on yourself because you are not where you need to be as long as you are making the steps towards what you need to do. And I think the most important thing that I want to encourage all the young people that are watching, and even the married people as well, is that you need to find your purpose in life. Mm -hmm. Now, God has given some people the ministry of marriage. They can flawlessly do marriage when their eyes are closed and when their eyes are open. But those that need grace, which I think I'll be one of those, like it will be a struggle. But because I desire to fulfill the purpose of God in my life, when I get to that, 
I am going to make efforts mm-hmm. and I'm going to avail myself for God to use me immensely in my marriage. But before that, whatever God has given my hand now, like whatever is in my hand now, be it my job, my business, my my family, mm-hmm. my friends, I am doing it with all the love that is within me. Mm-hmm. And that doesn't make me any less of a person. It doesn't make you any less of a person. Mm-hmm. So as we are celebrating Valentine's Day, the one love that you cannot do without is the love of God. And the love of God is like, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> You're not going to get chocolates and roses at your door for Valentine's Day. But trust me, tomorrow. it's much better than that. It is. It is sweeter. It smells better. Oh it is healthier. So peaceful. Okay. Yes. Very peaceful with no this. drama. Oh no drama <laughs> with the love of God. And so just like let mm-hmm. all that we said today like sink in for you, wherever mm-hmm. part in your life that you are. Don't feel, don't don't limit yourself because of people's expectations for you. Do not belittle yourself because others to choose to see you in a certain light. Mm-hmm. I think the most the, the the one thing that we have to worry so much about and strive so hard to do is is trying to please God. Yeah, yeah. That is that's it. it. That's, you took the words out of my mouth. Exactly. Nothing that else. Is it. What, what else is more important? What else? There isn't any, but then you know, as human beings, we tend to feel like, oh, yeah. I want, I want to be celebrated by others yeah. as well. And when I get to that stage, it like happens. on my wedding day, yeah. I want people to celebrate me. When I have my twins, I want people yeah. to celebrate me. Amen. But until it happens, as I'm selling my business, please celebrate me. Yeah. As I'm doing my show, please celebrate yeah. me. Mm-hmm. And even as I am here promoting others, mm-hmm. celebrate me as yeah. well. Why you're here? Why we're here? Yeah. Don't yeah, wait till the day that <laughs> don't wait till the day that I die and then you're going to say I have never ever 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 met like been at a funeral and they say, Oh my goodness, can you imagine? This person married at 27 and yeah, the other day. Yeah. Like they don't talk about the age you got married before you mm-hmm. died. They don't talk about that. Mm-hmm. And you know one thing that I uh one one um one thing that I also love to hold on to that I like to walk um, um in life with is really just learning to 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 make people feel good. One thing I always say is one day, you know, whenever my time comes and whenever God decides to call me, I want people to when people think about who I am, I want them to remember how I make them feel the love. I want them to remember all the smiles, the laughs that we had. I feel like in life, that's what that's what it's all about. God, God is love. love you know? God made us love. So I don't know why sometimes there is Be all happy. this it's okay. negative. It's okay. Life, I mean, about. life is really not that serious. If you're at a certain age and you know, you're not married. If you had a certain age and, you know, you don't have kids and that even goes to people that are married and happy, but really striving to have kids. Don't be yourself about it. Take it day by day. Even if you end up having your children today, who knows? The God that gave it to you today, he could say, you know what? I'm taking the back tomorrow. What will you do? You know, so just really learn to make yourself happy. Be happy and live your life. It's going to be okay. It is I gonna promise be okay. it's going to be okay. <laughs> it's gonna be okay. Now let's shake people off a little bit right. from this emotional okay. conversation that we had. Our <laughs> purpose for today's show was not to make anybody feel bad. Mm-hmm. It was not to talk down on marriage, and it was nothing negative. All we wanted to do was just have this conversation mm-hmm. to inspire the, the mm-hmm. young ones that they should know what they're doing and there should be purpose in what they're doing, mm-hmm. and they should celebrate whatever it is that God has placed them in and they should wait on God's timing it is only that is the only right timing but before we continue I just want to give Monica the opportunity to talk about her foundation we are talking about spreading love this is the month of love and we are people made to love like do you know how you know that fuzzy feeling you get inside when you know that somebody loves you, when you know you have loved somebody wholeheartedly. That is what we are selling to you today. Like, yeah. be, be a lover and also receive love. Mm-hmm. Let go of all the negativity. But Monica, tell us yeah. about your foundation, what you guys are all about, and how people can also support you guys. Yes. 
So um, I, I do have a foundation. It's called Monica Fia Donko's Foundation. Um, it was founded back in December of 2019, and its sole purpose is to help the poor and needy. That I really feel like that's one of my purpose in life is to make people feel happy, to give hope and and just you know have faith in you. I like to preach the hope and the faith because I feel like that's what we, we need we each other that. for. Yeah, you know, you don't know what it is that is going to happen tomorrow. So when you do have the chance and the opportunity, you need to uplift each other. Let each other know it's going to be okay. We just need to take it day by day. So the foundation is really about helping the poor and needy, as I said. Um, by God's grace, we've been we've been able to um, done our third foundation now. It's only been a year and some months, and it, I'm even yeah, donation. our third donation. And by the grace of God, there's been so many people that have been blessed through it. We've been able to feed so many families. We've been able to put smiles on faces, and it's simple. It's it's as simple as that. Just do something that you know will put a smile on somebody's face, and you don't know what you know people may be going through sometimes so it's really important to just uplift each other and make each other feel good so um we are on facebook um monica fiat Dunco foundation you can like us and follow us on there we're also on instagram at mad for impact and then if you have any questions you can also email us at madforimpact.com um, we're just here to really help each other we're here to put smiles on faces for the less privileged um, I'm blessed enough to be able to be a blessing to somebody. So I really don't take that for granted. Whatever God has laid on my heart, I want to make sure that I fulfill it and be the best at it. And that just goes back to what I wanted to say earlier. Um, whatever it is that God has placed in your heart, whatever your purpose is, do it and be the best at it. Be the best that there could ever be. If that's cooking, be the best chef that you could ever be. If that's singing, be the best at it. Um, you never know how far that can take you. And sometimes God may be testing us too. Yeah. God may be saying, you know what? Let me see the type of person that you are. I've laid this thing on your heart and let me see how far you can take it or how many people that you can bless through it. So um, yeah, that's pretty much what the foundation is about. Uh, we just really want to reach out to people and support them and love them, let them know that, you know, there's hope out there, whether it's financially, whether it's, you know, spiritually, whatever it is that we can do, um, you know, we help each other out. So please follow us on Instagram, Math for Impact, and then also um, like us on Facebook at Monica Fiat Donko Foundation. Okay, so, so yeah. how can people support you? What kind of support do you need? Yes, so um, our main our main goal really is to be able to build an orphanage home as well as the school in Ghana. So that's our next big project that we're working on. So, you know, building, it all comes down to finances, right? So, yes. Yeah, so, um, you know, we would love if you would be able to help financially in that aspect. Um, whatever amount that God would lay on your heart, whatever it is that you can bless us with, you can definitely reach out to us. Um, via Facebook, like I said, and then also Instagram. Just send us a DM. Let us know how you're willing to help, and then we can move on from there. Okay. Mm -hmm. So thank you, everyone, for joining us today. We know that we are out of our norms. We come live every Sunday, but today we decided to come live on Saturday because tomorrow is Valentine's Day. Everybody or a lot of people have a lot of... Um, a lot of people have a lot of plans and we don't want to interrupt the post love day celebration we are here today the topic today was love for sale love for sale some people were asking oh where can i buy this love some people were sending me messages telling me that they wanted to purchase some but unfortunately it was actually the opposite love is not for sale love is not on the shelf Love is not at Walmart. It is not at Malcolm. It is not on Amazon. Yeah. And when you go on Alibaba.com, you can never find love there. But our whole conversation was to inspire the young people that in all that you do in life, acknowledge God first, seek his purpose, and don't feel rushed or uh, pressure from the community or from the society. And now we do appreciate those that genuinely and sincerely approach us and show concern mm -hmm. about when we need to take some steps in life. Mm -hmm. But again, 
we just want to encourage our society, our community, that we have to be mindful when we approach young people. Because sometimes when you don't choose your words rightly, it might affect in a negative way. And that is not what we want. And I have my beautiful guest here today. So for all the single men out there, you know, as we are talking about love and all that, my very precious Monica Efia Donko. She is, she is at that stage where she needs to get married. You need to get married. <laughs> no, that's just sarcasm. But um, yeah. So if you want to send your application, Girl. my phone number is. Yeah, that's the phone number. I hope you got it. I hope you got it. All those men that are ready, that was the phone number. I'm gonna repeat that. The phone number is. I hope you got it. Okay. All right. So thank you all for joining us today. And Monica is a woman with a beautiful heart, not just a face and a body to match, but she has a heart that goes with all the beauty that you see seated next to me today. She has a foundation where they help the poor and the needy in Ghana. And their ultimate goal that they're working on is to build a home, shelter and also a school for those that are poor and that are needy. If you want to support in any way, please contact her. What's your phone number? In Ghana and U.S. Okay. So um, in Ghana, if you are interested in reaching out, um, I have my vice um, over there. So you can contact him. Um, the number is 024-5828-224. 024-5828-224. And um, if you're also interested um, over here, you can definitely DM us um, on Instagram at Mad for Impact. That's M-A-D-F-O-R-I-M-P-A-C-T. And then you can also um, message us and like us on Facebook, Monica Fiat Dunco Foundation. So if you're interested over here, reach out to me. And then if you're also interested in Ghana, you can call the number that I um, let me, she just said yeah. okay so thank you all and one thing that I, I was supposed to do last week when we were on live that I forgot to do I just want to say a very big thank you to one particular man and trust me the the support and the comments and the encouragement I have received in our society with this show has been like unbelievable. But I just want to talk about this man specifically today because he did something that just baffled my mind. And I believe if we had so many people like him in our community, we would do so much better. So I just want to say thank you so much and God bless you. Nana Uswa Sarebidiaku. That is the owner of Asafo Market. And when I talk about Asafo Market, not the, the central one in Ghana, but I'm talking about the one that is located in Arlington, Texas. The address for anybody that is in the Arlington, Grand Prairie, or Tarrant County area, the address for that market is 2905 East Arkansas Lane. Yeah and it's Suite 103, and it's in Grand Prairie, Texas. The, the zip code is 75042. Again, the address is 2905 East Arkansas Lane, Suite 103, Grand Prairie, Texas, 75052. He sells everything. Once you enter that place, you will feel like you're in the Asafa market in Ghana. This one was so wonderful. He gave me some words of encouragement a few um, weeks ago when I went to the store. I had my mask on, but he heard my voice and he said, <laughs> he asked me, can you take your mask down because your voice sounds like somebody I'm I looking know. for. And so I I took it off and he he just he knew the right words to give me and he encouraged me so much i was so pleased and he gave me gifts upon the, those words of encouragement i wasn't expecting that from him but he did that out of his own heart and i just want to say god bless you and for everybody that is watching me please remember to if you need any african food african anything mm -hmm. Just go to Asafo Market and he has got you. I also want to go ahead and tell you also about Owen O's signature. If you are looking for something for your loved ones, if you need something to wear. I mean, even in COVID season, you still got to look good because 
Yeah. We all have to look good. If you need Valentine's Day gift, please contact O and O Signature at four six nine seven six nine two. Two three zero six again is four six nine seven six nine two three zero six. We sell all things African, as you see. I've got on my Valentine's Day special. Can't wait, can't wait, can't wait. I'm gonna go go on my Valentine's Day virtual day. Um, in this beautiful <laughs> dress, we also sell beads from hand beads, neck beads, waist beads, anklets. We sell. Yeah, you see her, of course, you got to represent. Yes. We sell everything African wear. So please call me for your African wear as well. You can follow Needs to Talk on Instagram. It's we need to, no, sorry, it's Needs to Talk Sunday. And they're all together on Facebook. It's Needs with a Z at the end to talk. It's N E E D Z T O T A L K. Again, it's N E E. P Z T O T A L K. That's Facebook. And please remember in the month of February, because of Black History, I encourage parents, especially with COVID and us not being able to take our children out, just a little activity, just a little fun thing that you can do. Have your children record, record your children with them reciting what or who they are proud of as an African in recognition of Black History Month and send it to me on WhatsApp so that I can post it on my YouTube and on my WhatsApp page. Please send it to me on, on WhatsApp. The WhatsApp phone number is 469-585-5937. Again, it's 469-585-5937. So thank you all so much for joining us today. Remember to spread the love. Yes, okay. and not the virus. Not that, not that, please. <laughs> The Please. love, yes. spread the love. So <laughs> now, to one another. <laughs> let me go ahead and read the comments that we have, and we're going to do our drawing, and then we are going to end for today. So, hello, first lady Fitnat. I saw you were on Facebook earlier, and you came on YouTube. I hope you and Pastor and Phoebe are doing good. Happy Valentine's Day to you guys, Mister SKT in focus said that. Um, he said, okay, so most of these questions people ask them subconsciously, they may not necessarily mean it. Most people use it to start a conversation, etc. They don't actually think about it before asking. And then he went ahead and said, that's when we need to apply wisdom in answering such questions. And he goes on to say again, very amazing conversation that will go a long way to help people from different walks of life. Mr. Rav D says, for any person to define a woman by their marital status is insane and myopic mm -hmm. and then he said it's an insightful conversation so thank you all for joining us today we hope you enjoyed our conversation today it might not always be pleasant what we what we hear but if it edifies that is exactly what we're going to talk about some of these things we've not been conscious of but they have been having influence and sometimes negative impact and we just want to break those things we all know that there are so many things that we are dealing with externally in this world so the things that we have control of please let's make that effort to make it positive let it let it be something that is going to benefit somebody let it be something that is going to edify somebody this is not a time it's like when somebody is on the on the edge of a building wanting mm. to jump that is not the time you said look how ugly you are mm. no that is not the time to say, look how, how messed up your dress is. So that's not a time to be negative. That's, that is the time that you encourage the person and move them. We are all on the edge right now because of COVID, because of so many things that's happening in this world today. So please let us be mindful. And like Monica said, let's spread the love, the good kind of love, mm -hmm. and let's not spread the virus. Mm -hmm. Please remember to sanitize your hand. We have our sanitizer here whenever you are you are anywhere and please remember to wear your mask yeah you don't see us wearing our mask on the show because we pre-screen before we come and sit and talk with you guys we hope you enjoyed and so we're just going to do the drawing today i think for um youtube i see 
um, the people whose names are on there, those that made a comment, we are just going to put your name in the drawing, and then my guest here is going to select the, the winner, and we are going to send you a gift. So if you are currently live with us, please make sure you drop your name on YouTube and on Facebook so that we can put your name in the drawing. So Monica, any last advice for people that are watching us for their adults first and then for the younger people as well? All right. So um, just last minute advice for the adults. Um, I would really say when it comes to talking to your children, when it comes to talking to even anybody that's younger than you, even if you don't have children and you're, you know, um, grown enough to be married, you know, just encourage the younger ones around you. Let them know what's more important in life. You know, let them, if they need help finding what their purpose is, lead them the right way. Give them the right tools and the right essentials and the right steps to be able to make the right decisions in life. You know, guide them to find their purpose. And when they do find their purpose, push them. Let them work harder at it. Um, and then also, if you're a younger person listening to me, um, thinking about marriage, thinking about love, why not me? Why am I not married? You know, like I said earlier, honey, take your time. It will come. Um, most of the time, God is just preparing you for the right things to come. You, if you get married today, you don't know what's ahead five years from now, but God knows that. And because of that, he wants to make sure that you, you know, you're ready. He wants to make sure that any challenge that comes, you know, within the marriage, we pray that it's not going to be anything major, but nothing is perfect. You know, everything comes with challenges. So God wants to just make sure that, you know, he, he, he grooms us and makes us ready and and lets us know um what it is that we're getting ourselves into so don't beat yourself about it um love yourself okay if, if if anything if you if you can take anything home from this just really love yourself make yourself happy um life is too short okay and especially in this time right now you know, we're all, we, people are not even thinking about, oh, let, let's go get married or I want to do this. People are thinking about their safety, their health. You know, look at how many people have lost their lives due to COVID. I'm sure a lot of them were married and happy, but they're not here anymore. Right. So just really be happy within yourself um, and just pray to God for the right things. Make sure that, you know, you you ask God to put you in the right places at the right time, you know, to be around the right things at the right time and just pray for the wisdom and knowledge to be able to make the right decisions um, in the future. So I just want to spread the love. I want to spread faith. I want to spread hope and just encourage anyone that's listening that it will be okay. Whatever it is that you're going through, whether you're getting um, pressure from family members, whether you're getting, you know, you can even put yourself under pressure. Sometimes it's not even the people that are coming. It's just the things that we see on social media that we we just make this, we, we make ourselves feel so pressured that we need to have what it is that they have. We're part of it. Too. Exactly. But honey, you don't know what it is that they're going through. Some people are even wishing to be in your shoes right now. Okay. So it's okay. Take a deep breath and, you know, we'll just take it one day at a time and everything will be okay. So spread the love, not the virus. <laughs> I like that's that. Our, oh, that's, that's our new ending. Spread, spread the, the love, love, not the, the virus, virus, not the okay. COVID virus, no. not the first one, no. not the 2020 or 2021 no. COVID virus. And happy Valentine's Day, everyone. Can't I stress hope. that enough. <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day. I love you guys. If you don't get any Valentine's Day gifts, don't feel bad. Just make sure you tune in every day. Yes. I'm sorry. Every, every week <laughs> this month. And we need to talk. My send you a surprise gift. And Valentine's Day is not just about receiving love, but it's about giving, giving love. Mm -hmm. So please, let's do ours. Let's give love. Let's give love. Let's give love. There is too much that is against mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. So let us make that conscious effort to give love. I want to say happy birthday to my own daughter, my own niece, Amma Mpoma. Amma, happy birthday. God bless you. I hope that you live to see your grandchildren Amen. in good health, Amen. in wealth, and in wisdom. I love you so much. I know because of COVID, I might not see you, but when you guys go out to eat today, buy cake in my name, and I will pay for it. Okay, so happy birthday, and happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day.
Day to all everybody. Happy Valentine's Day. So we are going to do the drawing now. And so Monica, hold this. This is YouTube. So you go ahead and shake it up and take it out. And then we're going to do the one on Facebook. So if you're on YouTube, please remember to type in your name because I don't see everybody that is online. I just see the number. So please make sure you type your name. And we're going to do the Facebook one too. So what? whose name did you pick? Drum roll, drum roll. Whose name did you pick? SKT. Mr. SKT, can you please send me a message with your address so we can ship over your, your wow. gift? And now we are going to do the Facebook one as well. And so with the Facebook one, here we go. Okay. See, it's empty. It's empty. Mm -hmm. So there is no bias here, okay? Okay. <laughs> So for those that, that are thinking that we're just probably dropping in names that we like, we're not doing that. Nope. Okay, so this is the Facebook one. All right. Mm -hmm. So just encourage people out there, you guys. So remember to smile behind the masks, okay? We can still see your eyes when you're frowning. We can still see when you're mad, when you're upset. You know, life is it's it's precious and let's let's continue to just be happy, smile behind the masks, um, encourage one another, and let's just all take it day by day. We will be okay and just remember to spread the love. Okay. That's good. It's all about love over here. You think so? Huh? Yes, it's all about love. <laughs> Why do you go to buy love? <laughs> I go in my Bible, <laughs> but but the, the but the great thing about going in the Bible to find love is that it's free. You know, oh, God yes, will man. not charge me not a penny. You know, but the love that I receive from there is it's much Endless. yes, it's much more you know, it's much more needing than the one at the store. If there's any, yeah, even if that. Any, the one at the store, they you know. <laughs> They normally have expiration mm -hmm. date and the warranties are only for two years. Exactly. Like the longest warranties are five years. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, that's yeah. and we don't want any expiration dates around we here. Sure don't we want, want something that is everlasting. Love. Yes. Okay. All right. Should I drop your name too? Sure. Why not? I can win a little something for Valentine's yes. Day. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to drop mine too. Shoot. <laughs> I deserve some love too. Don't right. you think? Let me put mine on the big card. Oh, okay. No, because so, 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 you will know. So, no. so I know which so, one not to pick. So yeah. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to cheat myself out of this. No man. I've got some things I can give to myself. There you go. All shake, right. Shake, so shake, 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 shake. Okay. Right. Drum roll, please. Pum, 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 pum. Okay. All right, I feel like I want to connect. Priscilla? It's not me, it's just a person. Oh, okay. So, thank you, everybody. Yes. So, SKT from YouTube and Sister Priscilla from Facebook. Congratulations, please. guys. For those that are on Facebook watching live, please remember to go on YouTube, type in Osua TV. Mm -hmm. And Osua is O W U S U A. O W. US, UA, and please remember to subscribe, subscribe, and share the link. This is knowledge that is free for everybody. So thank you all for joining us today. We really appreciate your time. We love you all so much. Please remember to stay safe. Please remember mm -hmm. to wear your mask and social distance. Yeah. Social distance. Social distance. Mm -hmm. Because we want to be all alive when we give that testimony that COVID could not hold us down. Yes. Thank you Amen. all for joining us and happy Valentine's happy Day. Valentine's happy Day. Valentine's Day. Spread the Day. love. Happy Valentine's we Day. love you all and be safe. Mwah. Okay,